Who wants to work out some trauma? Huh? Huh? Hello, it's Sageism, but you can call me Sage. I've got some notes that I've printed now. Tell me you're a Virgo moon rising without telling me you're a Virgo moon rising. So what is shadow work and why is it important? Shadow work is a practice specifically for healing and understanding your behavior and all the trauma that you've been through up until now. Here is a lovely and poetic quote that I found from Bloner Wolf that really depicts what your shadow is. So when you hear about toxic people, they are prime examples of um, people who have not done the work to heal themselves. Not doing shadow work is the same as having a, a computer since the day you were born and through your whole entire life you never took the time to do the maintenance on your computer. And during this time, your computer's been hacked, um, it's been flooded, a whole bunch of things have happened and you're wondering why it's not working the way it's supposed to or why it's not predictable, things like that. You feel me? It's important. Now I'll spare you the details, but there was a point in my life where things were really rough. I mean, I felt like Jekyll and Hyde. I was a hot mess and it's like I couldn't get it under control. Like I had no control over my emotions and that drifted over to my mental capacity and it affected my physical being. It was, just, it was, it was rough. If I had never came across shadow work and actually took the time to journal and sit with myself and meditate, Lord knows who I'd be right now. So here we go, my friends. I'm going to lay down some tips for my beginner babies and hopefully they will be as useful to you as they were to me. Okay, so before you get into the nitty gritty of all of this, I want you to have the right mindset about how this is going to go. This is a lifelong process, meaning there's not going to be a point where you feel like, okay, I'm done and I can stop and I can move on from the shadow work. It doesn't work like that. Unfortunately, I wish it did, but it don't. So when you do these practices, think of it more as like routine self-care for yourself because while you're on this planet, you're always going to encounter things that can affect you emotionally and there's always going to be something that you can look back on and heal from. If you have a hard time opening up to other people and being vulnerable with other people, yeah. <laughs> journaling is a great place to start. This is an easy way to express your thoughts and get it out on paper that way it's not a jumbled mess in your brain. You know how when you're talking to someone about a problem and as you're talking to them about it, you kind of come to a realization yourself about how you can fix it? Yeah. This is essentially what you're doing. And you are allowing yourself to express those emotions that you probably didn't get the chance to express whenever you experienced it at the time. And as an added bonus, when you are journaling, um, a lot of times it quiets the chatter in your brain because you are focusing in something, AKA meditating, and it allows your guides to join the process with you. So a lot of times, you know, when you're writing things down or when stuff pops up in your head, it's not you, it's your higher guidance, your higher self guiding you through this process, which they're not normally able to do because through our day to day, we're thinking about so much that we can't hear them. Okay, I think you get it now. So I am going to go ahead and list some journal prompts that you can do for shadow work. Okay, the first one's going to be a three part question. So number one, what do you think is your worst trait? Why is it bad? And what is a positive aspect of this trait that you think is bad? Number two, if you could get rid of one memory, what would it be? And if that said memory was gone, how do you think it would affect who you are right now? Number three, what are five things that make me happy and why? How can I experience these things more on a daily basis? All right, so number four, and it's a juicy one because I do this to myself too because it's low key trendy and socially acceptable to do. Well, I'm doing just fine. I lied, I'm dying inside. So number four, in what ways do you put yourself down and do you tend to hide it behind humor? 
how do you feel after you've made these statements about yourself? And number five, if you could get rid of one habit, what would it be? How would your life be different if you let that habit go? Those five prompts should be a very good starting point. You can also go to Google. You'd be surprised on the shadow work you find on TikTok if you just put it in the hashtag. Other YouTube videos, literally the possibilities are endless. But if you don't feel like doing those journal prompts and you kind of just want to write it out, another good tip is to write it on a loose leaf piece of paper, even better if it's parchment paper. Write out everything that you just want to release that you feel like is holding you back. Any negative emotions, cry, whatever you need to do. And once you write it down, you can either burn that piece of paper and scatter those ashes to the wind, honey, or you can flush it down the toilet, throw it in the trash, whatever you want to do. It's really symbolic of you letting it go. Personally, I like fire because <laughs> If you really want to kick it up a notch, if you're already pretty in tune spiritually with yourself, you can call on Archangel Michael to come through and cut away all those ties that do not belong to you. You can call upon Isis. She loves, she's very great with healing. Jesus, whoever you turn to, you know, call them in. Call in your ancestors because they want to help you with this. That's what they're here for. When you heal, they heal. It's, it's all, it's all good. You know what I'm saying? Call them. Now let's talk about quantum jumping. Quantum jumping. This is my favorite. Let's go back in time and reprogram those memories that you don't want to have. So what you're going to do is you're going to sit down, lay down, find a position that's comfortable, and you are going to go back in time through your imagination to a painful memory that you would like to erase. And I want you to imagine this moment as vividly as possible. After you've recreated the scene, I want you to see yourself at that time and either A, imagine what you wish would have happened so that it was a more positive experience for you, say whatever you wish you would have said, or be that person that you needed at the time. Let me give a quick example. Let's say when you were five and you were out on the playground and there was this bully. Every time that bully would see you, they would call you names and tease you in front of other kids and, you know, just being a real dick. And ever since that happened to you, you've always felt nervous about being around groups of people because it made you feel like you weren't enough and you feel insecure and that nobody likes you, right? Well, what you would do is you would go back in time to that experience, reconjure it in your mind, and when that bully comes to you, you can either A, stand up for yourself and tell that bully to go after themselves because you are a queen, you are a goddess, and you are strong, and they're the ones that are insecure about themselves. Like, I want you to fully stand up and defend yourself, okay? So that's one option. Same scenario. Let's say you imagine a teacher saw what happened and she came to your aid and stopped the bullying and comforted you. Companionship, love. Maybe that's what you needed at the time is that you wanted someone to see what was happening and stand up for you. Or the third option is that you yourself can stand up for your younger self and say, hey, you ain't shit. You don't nothing you say affects me this little girl is beautiful yada yada editing sage here i just wanted to make sure y'all know the whole point of this third one is to really instill in your younger self that you are there for that younger version of you and that they can rely on you and that no matter what they're experiencing right now they are never alone and that they will always have someone by their side rooting for them so I hope that was a good example for all three scenarios. And really get into it, y'all. Like, that's the trick. Nothing works unless you firmly have the belief that it's gonna work and you put some emotion in it. So when I go back in my childhood traumas and it's a scene where I'm not feeling like I'm enough, I pour so hard into myself. I say, you are a queen. You are fully worthy of love. She is very gorgeous to me. <laughs> you know, I go in. So. Put, that, put as much energy as you can behind it. 
And my last little major tip for shadow work and what you can do is talking to yourself in the mirror every single day. Don't let up, even if it's just for 10 seconds. You go into that mirror and you speak the opposite of whatever your insecurity is. If you don't feel like you're smart, you go in that mirror and say, I'm smart as hell. If you don't feel like you're beautiful, you go in that mirror and say, I accept my face for what it is. I am definitely team self-acceptance over self-love because forcing yourself to love everything about you is really, really, really hard. And honestly, it can be really, uh, fuck, what's that word? It's just, it's, it's really hard to do. When you say I accept myself rather than love myself, you're saying I, even though I may not like this thigh on my body, I accept myself as I am and that is enough. So there you have it. I tried to keep it as short as possible because honestly, if we were talking face to face, we would be talking for hours, but I know y'all don't have all that time. I hope these tips are very helpful for you and if you have some suggestions on how we can all do shadow work in another way, please leave it in a comment below or if you have any questions about anything I said, you know what to do. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you vibing, you know, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and I will see y'all on the next video. Bye.